Xavier Saul Infested Captain may be the new king of Super Friends decks. A Super Friend deck is a deck that uses Planeswalkers to try and win the game by reaching their ultimates quickly or using just the extreme value that they can generate to win before your opponents can defeat you. These decks usually don't run a lot of creatures and usually are almost entirely made of Planeswalkers. For a very long time, Atraxa Praetor's Voice has been the choice commander for a Super Friends deck. Proliferating a guaranteed once per turn is a very good way to get your Planeswalkers up to those higher loyalty amounts very quickly. And Atraxa's four colors, which allows you to run almost every Planeswalker, just not some of the red ones. But Atraxa is almost a $60 card, which eliminates this option for any budget deck. Now budget players may want to play Super Friends too, and I think Xavier is the way to do it. Starting off with our mana base and ramp, we get to use a lot of lands that are usually not very good. Now a bunch of these have storage and depletion counters. These lands can usually tap for 2 mana or 1 mana of any color, but they have a downside of eventually being sacrificed or having to build up storage counters. But with Xavier, we're able to keep the storage counter count and the depletion counter count high. We're also running Karn's Bastion for an extra proliferate effect. Planeswalkers generally cost a lot of mana, so we're running all of the Signets that are available in these colors, and Soul Ring, and once again because of the proliferate theme, we're able to run things like Astral Cornucopia and Everflowing Chalice without a huge downside. If we get one counter on there, eventually we'll have like 10 counters on each. We're also running Joint Exploration, which functions as ramp when kicked. Now, moving on to the Planeswalkers, which are arguably the most important part of this deck, we want cheap Planeswalkers, monetary-wise, that create tokens, because those tokens can be sacrificed to proliferate. We have Arlen, which will make us a 3-3 wolf each turn. Two Ashiox from Theros and Eldraine that can both make Nightmare tokens. Freilis makes Lanowar Elves. Garuk can make some wolves as well, and if we have Arlen, they'll be bigger. And he can make beasts as well on some of his cards. And some of these ultimates can also help us win. Jace creates 2-2 illusions and copies of himself. Zhang Yanggu can create Mowu, the 3-3 hound. Kaido has his drones. Kazmina Enigma Sage makes fractals that can be big or small. Liliana will make zombies. Nissa will make plants. Tezzeret will make thopters. And, uh... Tyvar can make elves. Then we've got a bunch of copies of Vraska, which will make assassins or pirates, depending on which one we have. Now these might seem pretty good, especially with Xavier proliferating, but Xavier can only proliferate once each turn, so here's some more proliferate effects. Telekuthal will double all of our proliferates. Blightbelly Rat is a good blocker early, because when he dies, it will proliferate. Then we've got a bunch of enter the battlefield type effects that proliferate. Flux Channeler will proliferate every time we cast a Planeswalker. Pollen Bright Druid can put counters or proliferate. And then there's a bunch of card draw effects that proliferate on top. And then there's Thirsting Roots, which can uh, get us a land. And as an honorable mention, Biogenic Ooze doesn't proliferate, but gets us a lot of counters. We also have a bunch of untap effects. Green is famous for these, and there's a couple blue ones too. But these will really, really help, because Xavier taps to sacrifice a creature and proliferate so by untapping we can get more proliferates some of these also put plus one plus one counters on xavier which means he can be our win condition if we put enough counters and proliferate enough times a big xavier isn't our only win condition though there are several others in this deck that rely on proliferating to get us to that win Starting off with a classic, we have Helix Pinnacle. This one mana enchantment wins us the game if there are 100 or more counters on it. And with 100 counters, that's not too hard to get to with so much proliferating. In a similar vein, Millennium Calendar deals 1000 damage to each opponent when there's 1000 counters on it. Now, 1000 counters seems a lot, but Millennium Calendar will also be putting counters on itself every single turn we untap. Then with the proliferate, it should be pretty easy to get to that 1000. These cards don't technically win the game, but with so much proliferating, eventually we'll get to take a bunch of extra turns in a row, which, with so many extra turns, we should eventually be able to win the game. 
Acre Moon Gauntlet is especially good in this deck because if we have 10 Planeswalkers, then we'll be able to take an extra turn every single turn with all the proliferate effects. So, if we have 10 Planeswalkers, we proliferate 9 times, use Xavier, and they enter with some loyalty, they might have some residual loyalty, we might have another proliferate effect, but basically, every turn we get an extra turn. We also have a bunch of Planeswalkers that can function as win conditions. Raska Relic Seekers Ultimate, minus 10, target player's life total becomes 1. Now with all these tokens running around and all that stuff, it should be pretty easy to kill a player with 1 life. So, if we can activate this ability multiple times, get all of our opponents down to 1, swing in, boom, just dead, instantly. Raska the Unseen has minus 7, which will create 3 1-1 one, one Black Assassins that instantly make players lose the game when they're dealt damage by them. Now, if we can remove enough blockers, these creatures will eventually get in and kill our opponents. And we also have the ability to populate with Xavier, so we can get more of these. Garuk Primal Hunter is able to create a ton of 6-6 six, six green worm creatures by just removing 6 loyalty. It's not even that much loyalty, and we can make like 10 6-6s. Six, and Garuk, Cursed Huntsman, can give us an emblem that gives all of our creatures plus 3, plus 3, and trample. All those 1-1s one, and 2-2s two, we're making with our Planeswalkers, they're now 4-4s four, and 5-5s five, with trample. Nothing too big. In total, this deck comes out to $125, which is a little bit more than my usual budget, but for a deck this powerful with so many Planeswalkers, win conditions, and combos, it seems like a reasonable price. So... It's a little bit more expensive than what I was hoping, but $125 for 100 cards is alright. What do you think?